I'm going to show you how to put spokes into a slotted wooden base. So as you can see, there is a slot around the entire diameter of the base. This is a 10 inch base. It is very important that you find a way to divide it into quarters, like 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock. And that helps you to put your spokes in and be able to twine and have equal numbers. So for this one, with the wrong side up, it's best to work in quadrants when you're doing it, the lash, or the twining or the weaving, whichever you choose to do. And uh, you just place the one at each of the two quadrants to start, marks to start. And then this one is going to have nine in between. And since it's an odd number, I'm going to about eyeball where the middle of this one is. I, I, I'm not an exact person here, but I'm going to try to do that. And then I know I need to get about four more in between each of those. So you just find I'm doing this blind here with the, with the slot. So hopefully I find it pretty quickly so it doesn't take too much time. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to get it in. The reed is a little thicker and um, it's hard to get it into the slot. Sometimes you have to turn it to find it. Um, it's hard to get it in the slot and you might have to do what they call scarfing the reed, which is taking a, a tool, a scarfing tool, which has a little, a little blade on it and um, just kind of shimming down the end a little bit so it's not quite so, so thick and that often helps to get it in. But these are going in pretty easily. Um, some of these pieces are a little thick. Um, so it's very important that these spokes stay in, pushed in. Right now it's not a problem because you're pushing them in as you lay them. However, when you start to twine or weave, whichever you choose to do, um, they tend to want to pull out uh, and you have to constantly work to make sure they're, they're staying in. So here's the first nine in between the two. So you're actually gonna start with 11. And I'm gonna grab a piece, I'm gonna actually weave on mine um, just to get this up here, just to make it work a little bit better. And you weave a quadrant and because I'm using a flat reed, I'm going to start on top because this will be the inside of the basket. The sides will all come up. So I don't want the wrong side out. So I'm going to have the wrong side facing up and I'm going to go on top of that first spoke and that way it won't show. The important thing is to press it all the way down against the base and as you're going, take the time. It's so important. Take the time to adjust and push in those spokes because you notice they're moving a little bit. They're going sideways a tiny bit. And then it's important to straighten them out and tuck them in. Make sure that reed goes all the way down to the base for the first row. It is so important. That will really actually help to keep them in the slot when you go to upset the spokes at the end. So I take the time, since it's already woven a little bit, I have a little bit of give here where I can move it without them all shifting. So I'm going to take some more from the water and I have already have this one done so I'm going to put this one in and then I'm going to put my halfway mark and then four on either side and notice I'm trying to keep this up so it's out of the way and I don't lay my reed on top of it and then have to dig it out later which it's going to go behind anyhow but it's better to have it right there on top ready to go when you are. So I'm finding the wrong side, the rough side, and I'm putting it up because this will be the inside of the basket. And you can eyeball the distance between them. You're trying to get them even, but again, like I said, I am not a perfectionist. Uh, for some people that probably would drive them crazy, but it is okay for me if they're not exactly right. You just want to have a space for the reed that you're going to twine or weave with to be able to fit between them without getting too tight. It's 
also a really good idea when you're done just to go back and recount to make sure because there's nothing worse than having this whole thing around once with your twine or your reed and find out you don't have the right number. So I know I'm here, so I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See, I have 10. So I actually, let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I actually have too many. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I put too many in here. So let me, let me look here. And that happens. I mean, that's why I said always check and see. I would not have caught that, I guess, if I hadn't mentioned that it's important to do. Let me see what I did here. Notes. Um, let's see here, sorry. Momentary glitch, which if you don't have a mistake or have something you have to work on, then lucky you. Not the case for me, constantly checking on things. All right. Let's check this again here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now I got it. And then you're going to continue to weave around. And notice how they're slipping and moving. Slide them in. Get them back. Especially when you go under. When you're, when you're done going under, when you go on top, it's not that big of a deal. But when you go under, it's important to make sure you push it, the reed down or the, the lashing down. Not lashing, sorry. The twining down. And that you also... Make sure you push in your spokes. I'm going to move these over a little bit as I do them, just to give me a little better space in here. I can see it's not quite what I would like. Okay. And just keep on going till you get to the spoke. That's at the next mark. Twining does tend to go a little bit easier because it's narrower and easier to work with, but this actually makes a really good tight tight one. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to push these in. I can see I'm not quite to it as I go to the side here. Get my next bunch that I need. Uh, put this in. I'm going to use the other end. That has a kind of a frayed end that's going to get cut off or bent in anyway. So I'm going to get rid of that and then Okay, and let's see if I can get this one right this time. <laughs> Count correctly. So there's my middle one. So I've got to get four more in between those. I'm having a little trouble finding the slot. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a turn so I can sort of glance and see it sideways. No harm, no foul in that. And because you've already done a little bit around it, it does help. So you can move it without too much of disturbing the spokes that are in there. So one, two, three, four, five, and four more. And you notice I do, I do keep checking um, just to be sure that you have what you need and it's not going to end up Being, you have to have a certain amount to be able to do the weaving like this. Twining, odd works great, but he, uh, re, re, le, bleh, weaving like this, you definitely have to have a number. <clears throat> so as you are lifting, you can see that one has moved. I'm going to make sure that's pressed down, push my spokes in. It is so worth the time to do it now. I just can't emphasize that enough because it does really help when you're finished uh, and at the end and getting ready to upset your spokes and get ready to finish the weaving the basket, it really does help to get them to where you need them to be. Okay, so now I don't have to place any of the pencil marks because I already have them. And I am just gonna put my nine in there. If you have an even number, putting this in the middle is not is not quite a method you can use, but you can kind of eyeball the middle of them and then place the even numbers on either side that you would need to give it the right spacing. It's a 
little loose. So I'm going to try the other end. That's a little better. Sometimes one end might be a little um, looser than the other, and it's really going to create some issues. All right, I'm going to double check because I wasn't counting as I did it. So here's my pencil marks. They're starting here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I see it. Nine. Okay, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. Okay. And see, as, see how I moved it and they're starting to move? That's because I don't have it twined or woven yet. And they don't want to stay put because they're just barely in that slot. So this will help again. If they come out, put them back in. Go ahead and weave or twine around. Just straighten them. Push them in as you do it. Take the time. It seems like it might take forever to get it done, but it's okay. It is so worth it in the end. All right, and because I'm weaving, I have to start and stop. And you do it just like you do when you do a regular weave. I did get a pair of scissors out. So you overlap four. So here's where I am starting the first one. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna go ahead and just redo one and two, tuck it in there, get it in there pretty good. It might tend to want to push out because you're going round and not straight. And then you're going to cut it just a hair shorter than the fourth one. Tuck it in there. This may take a little bit of finagling to get it to stay. The next row will help to keep it in, but do your best to get it in there as you're doing it. And like most weaving, you're going to start at the opposite side. So here's where I ended. So I'm going to go turn it so I have the opposite side at the top, which is about here. And I want to look to make sure I'm the opposite. So again, I'm going to try to find the wrong side if I can find it. And I'm going to start on top of here. And now and you can put a, a clip or something here to hold if you need to. But now I'm going to, again, take the time to push it all the way down and push the spoke in after you've gone under. So straighten them, get them where you want them, and as you're doing that, push them in. It's a little bit easier this time because you do have another row. Much easier to just keep turning the base as you're going, but see those spokes still tend to wanna go with you and moving your reed. So don't hesitate to do that. Tuck them in. Keep going. And this is basically what you do until you have the number of rows that you need to have your base ready before you upset them. Now, when you upset the spokes, it's very simply just pushing the spokes up against the twining so you start to create the sides of the basket. It is very important, and what I have learned when you do that is not just to push them up, but to press in and then bend. It just makes it so much easier. I'll be creating another video here in just a few minutes to show you how to do that and make sure that it doesn't allow any spokes to pull out of the bottom. Once you have the sides woven, I mean, yes, if the spokes come out, after you've started weaving or whatever, it's gonna hold, go in place. It's not gonna pull up, it's gonna be too tight, but it's gonna look like a much better finished bottom uh, like you would want to have with your, with your basket. So I'm just gonna finish this row around. I'm gonna probably do at least two more rows before I get the measurement I want. Just a quick reminder how to finish. And you can see I'm pushing the spokes in as I'm finishing. I'm adjusting the spokes to about where I want. That spacing is a little more than I want, so I'm gonna kind of adjust it, press it down, try to keep the even spacing if possible. I've gotten to the end, so I'm going to overlap one and two, so I can't see where I started. And then just before I overlap three and four, I'm gonna cut it a hair shorter. And then tuck it under. And I'm going to go to the opposite side over here and get ready to start twining my next one. 